Hey, it's Matt, we're back. Uh, and in this module, we're gonna build on what we've done in the last module to write data to Google Cloud Storage. So previously we were writing taxi data to Postgres, which is a structured uh, OLTP database, which just means it's row oriented versus column oriented. Um, but now we're gonna write the data to a cloud storage provider, Google Cloud Storage, um, which is more of a file system in the cloud. And often uh, in data engineering, we write data to uh, these cloud storage destinations because storage is much cheaper. Um, and it can also accept semi-structured data much better than a uh, relational database. From there, typically workflows would involve staging data, cleaning data additionally, and then maybe writing it to a, an analytical source or using uh, a data lake or, or a data lake house solution um, in the cloud. So what we're gonna do is build largely upon what we did earlier with a few, a few changes in the end. So we can start with a new batch pipeline um, and we're gonna actually load the same data. Now you might be thinking, hey, we already wrote that. Uh, isn't it bad to write duplicative code? And the answer would be yes. But the great thing about Mage is that because everything exists as code, um, we can reuse that the block we used earlier. So if we drag the load API data block over, we're actually going to have exactly what we wrote before. So now we're pulling that API data in again. Uh, and we can also reuse our um, transformer, the clean taxi data block. We just have to be sure to uh, attach these blocks and that's done by dragging um, one block here over to the other. Uh, so now our API data is gonna be passed to our transformer. The transformer is going to drop those taxi rides with a passenger count um, uh, that, that are equal to zero. And finally, we just have to write the data to Google Cloud Storage. So we already configured Google Cloud, everything should be good to go. And if we create a Python data exporter to Google Cloud Storage, call this taxi to GCS um, parquet. That's an important note, we're gonna write to a parquet file. Uh, this is attached, so we know the data is being passed in here. We've already configured this. Um, so we just have to use uh, the bucket name, which is mage zoom camp Matt Palmer three, and then the key. So we're gonna call this NYC taxi data dot parquet. Um, so mage is gonna infer the parquet file format here, and it'll write directly to this location. So no folder or anything. We're just gonna dump it there. Um, command enter. Oh we haven't executed the upstream blocks yet. So we can hit execute with all upstream blocks. We'll now load the data, clean it, and then upload it uh, directly to GCS. Once this is done running, we should see that parquet file in GCS immediately. Um, processing. So exporting the data frame. It's a larger file, so this might take a minute. And we're done, cool. So I have the bucket open in another tab here. If I reload this, there you have it. So we have our parquet data sets, about 30 megs. So you might be saying, hey Matt, right? Like that's great, but for large data sets, do we want to write it to a single parquet file? Often that's not the case in data engineering. So um, we're gonna go one step further. We're gonna write this to a partitioned uh, parquet file structure. And so partitioning, just means to break a data set up uh, by some row or characteristic. Um, and partitioning by date is often particularly useful because uh, it, it uh, creates an even distribution for, for rides and it's a very natural way to, part to query data. So that makes it easy to access uh, by extension. Um, so in addition to this, uh, uploading data just purely to one file, we're also gonna load it to uh, GCS using a bit of a more advanced method, but I'm gonna show you how. So we're gonna add a data loader uh, with without a template, and this is gonna be taxi to GCS partitioned parquet. So we have this block here. We actually don't want the connection to there. We would like it to be connected directly to um, the clean taxi data. And so these blocks are gonna execute in parallel, which is kind of nice, Mage can, can do that. Um, but what we're gonna wanna do is uh, define our credentials manually, um, and then we're gonna use the PyArrow library to uh, partition this data set. So 
from um, import pyarrow as pa and i've included pyarrow in the uh, docker image so it should be installed by default and then we're going to import pyarrow.parquet as pq um, finally we'll import os which is necessary for getting environment variables uh, and our logic for exporting data here actually so what we need to do in order to use this library is tell um, Pyro where our credentials live. So this is something that Mage does that we've set in that um, config file, uh, but we're gonna do it manually here. Um, so we can actually, yeah. So what we'll do here is we'll define uh, os.environ, which is setting, whoops, environ, setting a environment variable Google application credentials. And we're gonna set that equal to the location of that, uh, that file that we mounted. Um, so an easy way to find that is to go to the terminal. We'll do like a ls dash la, um, this verdant current for me. It'll probably be something different for you. And we know that's at home slash src slash, there we go, hide that. So this is gonna tell um, Pyro where our credentials are located. And then we have to define as well the bucket name. So we'll do like bucket name equals, you can actually take exactly what we have up here and define that. And the one other thing we need is a project ID. Oh, sorry. So the one other thing we need to define, not the object key, but sorry, rather the project ID, man, bucket name, project ID. And for me, that's equal to this value, verting current uh, 393218. Um, and now we need to define a table name. So for the table name, we'll call it uh, NYC taxi data. Um, and so, what we're doing here is we're saying this is the bucket, this is the project, and this is what our table wants to be. And then from there, the, the PyArrow Py library is going to handle the partitioning. Uh, and so it's just easier to define this stuff once uh, rather than try and do it in code. Um, so the root path is then going to be the uh, bucket name and the table name. And this is just because um, cloud storage functions essentially as just like a file path. And so again, defining it this way allows us to define the variables once, uh, define exactly how we're loading our credentials, um, and then we can access all of these variables within the same block. So we have our data that's being passed in. Um, one thing that we have to do is, is uh, cast, or, so I mentioned partitioning by date is a, uh, a pretty helpful pattern. One thing we have to do is actually truncate uh, that or create that date column because we only really have a date time column. So we're going to create a new column, uh, tpep pickup date, because we can see up here, right? Um, if I if I run this really quick, wait for this to load a second. The tpep pickup uh, date time is a date time column, and we want to partition on date. So we need to basically create a date column which will give us something to partition on. And you can see here, it's even defined as a, like a date time string uh, or, or a, like a Unix timestamp uh, because that's how it's um, represented uh, in pandas. So as long as we do this, we can say data dot, um, well, we'll do the bracket, tpep pickup date time. And then we can just use the notation dot dt dot date and because it's a date time column, that should give us uh, the date um, in a string format that, that Pyro can use. And so for Pyro, you have to define what, what's known as a Pyro table. So we'll call our table pa.table.fromPandas. So we're reading our data frame into a Pyro table. Um, now we're gonna define our Google Cloud Storage object, and that's in the pyro.filesystem uh, GCS um, file system. 
So now we're saying, okay, we need a, this file system object that's going to authorize using our um, environment variable automatically. And then finally, we need to use the parquet write to dataset method to write this to the dataset. And the first argument is our table, which is a pi arrow table. The second argument is our root path, which is root path. Uh, the third argument are the columns to partition on, partition calls, which is equal to, um, and, and it has to be a list, our tpep pickup date. And the last argument is the file system, which is our GCS file system. So if I got all this right, we're defining our date our, our column to partition on, um, we're defining our table, we're letting a part, part, pi arrow know what our file system is, and then this command should write it to um, the data set. So running this, let's see what happens. We get an error, um, as is usually the case. Positional argument follows keyword argument. Ta table root path equals root path. Um, Two equal signs there. That's no good. Looks like this is running. So this is breaking our data up by date and then writing it to different parquet files. And this will be illustrated in our bucket when we're done. Um, and this is kind of how larger data sets are managed, right? Because it wouldn't make sense to write a, a two gigabyte data set to one file. That would be really slow to read and write. But if we partition uh, files, there are a lot of advantages to querying the data, but also read, uh, IO operations like reading and writing. And I think partitioning is discussed a bit more in detail in the Data Talks uh, Club Zoom Camp, so you'll learn more about that from Alexi and co. Um, so if we go to our bucket now that that's done, we can see that we not only have our single parquet file, which is about 30 megs, but we have a folder, NYC Taxi Data, which is our table. And now in the folder, TPEP pickup date, for each date we have another folder. And so if we go into one of these folders, right, then we have a uh, random string parquet file. And in each parquet file are the taxi rides for that date. So you can imagine if you're writing a query against this data set, like, oh, select taxi rides where date is equal to, you know, uh, 2021 uh, February 22nd, now we're only reading this one folder. Instead of, uh, you know, in the other instance, we have to read in the entire file and then find those dates. This is much more efficient from a query standpoint. So this tutorial has been on taking that data and writing to cloud storage, not only uh, as a single file, but also as a partition of our K files. And the benefit of using Pyro is that it abstracts away like chunking logic because if you have if you were to do this yourself right you'd have to iterate through the data frame uh you'd have to do like io operations that wouldn't be fun but it kind of takes out the middleman takes out the the pain of communicating with um google cloud storage communicating with pandas um chunking logic etc and now we have a partition data set that we're ready to do more data engineering on so um this is sort of a sample workflow from api to cloud writing data from api to cloud uh, up next, we're going to talk about another sort of ETL process, which is writing data from cloud storage to an, OL, uh, an OLAP database, Google BigQuery in this instance. Um, but yeah, I'm Matt. We're getting there. This is uh, Data Engineering.